certification research is done by Lane. Project was on organic certification research is done by Lane, myself, Lillian, Justin, Rylan, and Sammy. It's sponsored by and prepared for Sarah Willens of Wildflower Bride Farms. So Wildflower Bride Farms are located about three minutes north of Camrose, about 80 acres in size, and it's owned, operated, and managed by Sarah. It's home to about 40 beehives and two small herds of sheep and cattle. And the primary focus is on selling honey that's 100% natural, but Sarah is looking to see if becoming organically certified is beneficial because she already practices some of the pre-requirements that need to be met for this certification. We had two main goals coming into this project. The first one was to find out more about the specific organic requirements that need to be met for Sarah's main products. So for the beef, the lamb, and the honey, as well as to look at the Canadian government is currently doing to protect consumers and small producers by preventing honey fraud through testing and labeling requirements. And this will be covered later on in the presentation. We then, for our second goal, had to combine all this information and compress it into an accessible format for Sarah so she can inform herself and her consumers as to why supporting organic producers is advantageous to the environment as well as the farmers. And then we shared the highlights and key findings with everyone here today, mainly focusing on understanding what exactly goes into food that's labeled as organically certified. There's a lot that has to be met. Our research approaches. So we relied on official government websites and reports, especially ones under the Canadian Food and Inspection Agency as well as we use journal articles that were less than 10 years old to ensure that we are providing our sponsor with up-to-date information. We got the privilege through a personal connection to interview Chatsworth Farms and they're out by Vermilion. They raise chicken, beef, lamb, and grow their own grain crops. And they were previously organically certified, but decided to reconvert into just a sustainable farm. And some of the reasons behind this is they highlighted how the cost of becoming organically certified is not always financially viable, especially for small producers. So now on to the organic products and sustainability. Um, organic products are the result of sustainable farming practices that include producing products that are free of chemicals, antibiotics, and GMOs that could potentially harm our environment. As well, these uh, organic products are produced more naturally with uh, consumers' health in mind. Um, it does require more time and cost from the farmers or the producers um, making these products. And that is why you'll see organic products are more money than items that are made through conventional farming. That's kind of why you see that price difference. And some sustainable farm practices include limited application of chemicals, synthetic fertilizers, antibiotics on animals used for treating them, and as well as manual or more homeopathic treatments are used in sustainable farming. And this just kind of helps um, treat diseases, pests, and weeds while limiting the amount of chemicals that are um, that get into the plants or the soil and can contribute to um, other environmental problems. So why farm farmers should go organic? Uh, there's many benefits to being an organic farmer, some being there's less interference with the environment because you're not spraying herbicides and other pesticides. You're also not using inorganic fertilizers. There are more sustainable practices. Uh, the natural feeds produce natural products that have a greater nutritional value. They also <clears throat> increase biodiversity and the products also increase in value because beef is almost twice as valuable when it's organic compared to conventional. However, there are some drawbacks to being an organic farmer. The cost of feed is very high it's often very difficult to find in Alberta. So if you have access to the land, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, organic feed also may not include the extra vitamins that's in conventional feed, making them uh, 
less efficient at optimizing animal growth. So you have to supply more feed to get the same growth. There's also increased disease susceptibility for uh, organic herds because they are prohibited from using many vaccines and modern medicine practices. Is certification beneficial for smaller producers? Uh, for honey producers, we thought that it is beneficial uh, to be organically certified since there are fewer requirements. Uh, the main requirement is to have a three kilometer buffer range from your bee colonies that ensures um, your bees will be getting their pollen and making honey from um, organic plants uh, that haven't been sprayed or fertilized with anything. Um, for beef, there were a lot of additional costs to be sustainable and uh, to pay for your certification. It's an annual cost. We also mm -hmm. talked with Chatsworth Farms, which is near Vermilion. They uh, converted from conventional, or sorry, from organic farming to conventional farming in 2017. And they just found that it was harder to provide enough feed for their cattle that was um, organic and um, had enough quality in it as well. Um, so it can be beneficial to be certified if you have enough cattle and um, have enough land to support them as well. And for lamb producers, it is easier to maintain um, lamb and sheep compared to beef because they are a smaller animal and they do require less feed, which means that you can get away with less uh, land that has to be uh, farmed organically, um, which lowers the cost and um, with selling at an organic price, you can make a bit more in your sales. Organic meat requirements. Organic meat has an extremely extensive list of requirements and prohibited practices and substances. These requirements range everywhere from feed and medicine to the wood used to build barns and pens. Some of these requirements are refrain from using organ inorganic chemicals and physical alterations to animals. For their health care, aim to use natural breeding habits, stay away from antibiotics, and you may use artificial insemination when needed. For their feed, you need proper feed and a permanent water source at all times. For their living conditions, you must use proper materials for barns and shelters, so untreated wood. And you need proper pen sizes for indoor and outdoor, and they're different for cattle and lamb. Cattle pen sizes for indoor are 5.6 meters squared per, per head of cattle for 500 kilogram cows increasing to 7.25 meters squared per head for 900 kilogram cows of bedded area and outdoor is nine meters squared. For cattle finishing phase, they are prohibited from being inside during grazing season and for outdoor, it is 23 meters squared per animal for 363 kilogram finishers and an increased to 46.5 meters squared per animal for 545 kilogram finishers. And calves for indoor are 2.5 meters squared per head for young calves, increasing to 5 meters squared per head for growing steers and heifers. And outdoor are 5 meters squared per head to 9 meters squared per head, depending on the size of animals. And for a maternity pen, it is recommended one maternity pen per 20 cows, and the size is 13.4 meters squared per head. For lamb, Use and does and nursing lambs and kids for indoors, two meters squared per head plus 0 0.35 meters squared per head for each lamb and kid. And for outdoors, three meters squared per head plus 0.5 meters squared per head for each lamb and kid. Bottle fed, weaned and feeder lambs and kids for indoors, 0 0.5 meters squared per head, increasing to 1.5 meters squared per head by one year of age. And outdoors, 0 0.75 meters squared per head increasing to 2.25 meters squared per head by one year of age. Rams and bucks over one year of age indoors three meters squared per head and outdoors 4.5 meters squared per head. Sustainable beef certification was introduced in 2016 because of the population's demand for there to be a safe and long-term long solution to beef and meat production. Uh, the cert certification requirements were created by the Canadian Roundtable for Sustainable Beef 
and their requirements rely on five basic principles that are natural resources, people and community, animal health and welfare, food, efficiency and innovation, and the certification for this for sustainable beef is done through a private certification body and they are either verified beef producer plus or where food comes from inc in order to get certification reach out to these organizations and they come back to you and send the requirements and then they will send an auditor to your farm to look over your production and how you treat your animals and your co-workers uh, certification can either cost anywhere between 250 and 400 dollars per year depending on the level of certification you are looking for. There are three levels of certification based on the backgrounding you do with your cattle mostly. So backgrounding is how you feed them early in their lives. Uh, they mainly take a forage based diet early in their lives because heavy grain diets can lead to disease. Um, in order to be retain your certification, there is extensive record keeping that has to go on and each year you reapply for your certification, you have to send in your records and they will be evaluated and if you keep up with the requirements, they will uh, maintain your certification over a five year period, uh, you have to reapply and have another on farm audit on your farm. So within organic hunting requirements, there are 29 laws spread out over 16 sections, which means it's easier than organic meats, but also has a bigger variety of things to consider. And this is all because there's a focus of removing bee contamination from this really long list of prohibited substances like sewage and other gross man-made things we don't want in our honey. And in order to enforce this, they have really strict dietary things. So the farmers cannot actually feed their bees. They must, they, the bees, must forage for everything they consume. And... These restrictions also extend to hive construction, pest management, and the extraction of processing honey. So you don't have to just consider what your bees are touching. You have to consider if the wood's treated or how you're going to get rid of your pests because you can't use pesticides and all that kind of stuff. And in order to really enforce this, they just have this three kilometer prohibited substance buffer zone. So there cannot be anything prohibited in this zone, which means you have to actually find a spot. You can't make a spot because you can't really make people that are farming move. According to Statistics Canada, there was 9.9 .9 million pounds of honey produced in 2021, which was an 8% increase from 2020. The value of honey also increased by 39.4% from 2020, which came out to $278 million of Canadian honey sales. There's a total of 13,000 beekeepers producing Canadian honey and managing over 810,000 bee colonies across the country. Which brings us to the big issue on hand, honey fraud. Now, many imported honeys aren't actually pure honey, but rather they're mixtures with additives and cheap fillers like corn syrup and fructose, which are sugary still, but way less healthy than natural honey. And because they're cheaper, you can actually sell the fake honey for way less, maintain a profit margin, and under undercut actual honeys in the market, which kind of just drives them out. And pure honey really can't compete with cheap honey. It's also kind of gross. I mean, look at this image. I didn't know which one was the natural honey, and plot twist, it's the one on top, which looks really gross, but also that's what natural honey is supposed to look like, and the ones on the bottom, when they look like that, it's because of the corn syrup been mixed in. Wild. And in order to prevent this, the Canadian Food and Inspection Agency, or SOFIA, inspects both domestic and imported honeys for sugar substitutes to ensure authenticity. Now, they have two main methods, stable isotope ratio analysis and nuclear magnetic resonance analysis. Now, the second one, it's kind of like an fMRI. You just use magnets to vibrate particles really fast, and then they give off energy. Sugar molecules that are, that is not honey molecules, emit a lot more energy, which makes that bigger peak you can see kind of in the top, the black line, and then regular honey molecules make a smaller peak. Now, stable isotope ratio analysis actually takes a ratio of the carbon molecules in the type of honey itself in order to create a single point on a graph as shown here. Now, actual honey, like authentic honey, has a very consistent ratio, which means that they all kind of group together in that line, but when you add extra things to it, like fructose or corn syrup breaks up that ratio and moves them off the line and that way the outliers as you can say here are the adulterated honeys it's a little more scientific 
a lot less fun. Goals achieved. For this project, we had many goals set out for us. Throughout the three week, we have achieved these goals to the best of our abilities. These goals that we achieved are a checklist to keep track of Sarah's progression, short write-ups of the appendices to briefly cover the main goals of each cert certification program, research the cost and benefits of the certificates and provided small breakdowns of expected sales increases as a result, which is contrasted to how many sales would be required to make up for the cost of certification. Also, we made this presentation to show the importance of local certified honey and the fact that it's certified. Also, for each organic certification program we looked into, we provided the appendices for honey, beef, and lamb. The next steps for Wildflower Bride Farms and Sarah is navigating the organic market. Due to there being such an extensive list of requirements and record keeping that needs to be done to maintain your organic certification, a group of students could help Sarah with that in the coming years. Sarah could also look into her dairy certification because her milk is unique in the way that her brown VA cows produce A2A2 protein to milk, which does not produce a lactose intolerant response in comparison to the A1, A2 protein milk. Uh, Sarah could also host public events like Save the Bees Day or um, her bucket days are also a good example of a way she already does this. She could also diversify and produce new bee products like bees wax, for example, is good for lip balms, hair waxes, or moisturizers. So that is our presentation. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask and have a wonderful Friday.